Hello guys how are you all i hope you guys are having a good time in your life i welcome you to my channel literature ki duniya today the poem that i have got for you is by a romantic poet of 19th century samuel taylor coleridge and the poem is kubla khan so here in this video i am going to uh, analyze the poem in front of you guys line by line so let's begin our video in zanadu did kubla khan now zanadu here is an imaginary place it does not exist in reality so kubla khan he is not an imaginary person he was a mongol emperor and he was a, a grandson of genghis khan so here the lines are saying that kubla khan ordered for a stately pleasure dome to be built and he wanted it to be built where where else the sacred river ran through kevons major less to man down to a sunless sea he wanted it to be built at a place where the sacred river alf alf is a river where the river flows through kevons kevons means caves these caves are so deep that they are uh, immeasurable to men then he goes on to say so twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round then he goes on to say about the surrounding area he says that the area is covered by fertile ground with and it is covered with great with huge walls and towers it is covered all around with these towers and walls then he goes on to say and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossomed many an incense bearing tree he says that the surrounding area is full of beautiful gardens and slanted rills rills means small rivers where blossomed uh, there there are so many sweet smelling trees and there were forest ancient as the hills and folding sunny spots of greenery he says that this whole aura is very beautiful as there are beautiful gardens sinuous rills sweet smelling trees there is a beautiful forest over there so this whole environment is quite soothing then he moves on to the second stanza but oh that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill at the what a sedan cover now chasm means a deep crack in the earth now you will notice one thing that the chasm has been defined as romantic chasm here we can see coleridge's use of romanticism his use of heightened imagination there is a use of both natural and supernatural things in the poem which make this poem a romantic one so here he is talking about a deep romantic chasm which slanted down a hill it is a green hill basically what he means that it is covered by so many trees now what trees are they they are sedan trees sedar sedar is a cedar sorry cedar is a tree so the whole area is covered with sedan trees then he goes on to describe the place and he makes it into a spooky a haunted place he says a savage place as holy and enchanted as ever beneath a waning moon was haunted by women wailing for her demon lover he says ki this whole place is quite mysterious it's haunted why because here one can find a woman who is crying for her lover but how her lover is her lover is a demon one her lover is somebody who is cruel who is not honest to her so she is crying for him so this is quite mysterious because this is a lonely place and how can a single woman be here moreover she is crying for her demon lover then and from this chasm with ceaseless turmoil seething 
then in these lines the poet again moves on to the river he says the river is so turbulent it is so noisy it is so upset that it passes through it leaps up through it smashes through the chasm as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing it appears as if this earth is panting so hard similarly the river is very turbulent this time so it is leaping through the chasm then the poet says a mighty fountain momently was forced from there as it was leaping through the caves it fell into it exploded into the fountain and when it exploded into it when it burst into it when it fell into the fountain amid whose half intermitted burst huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail or shafty grain beneath the thresher's plane the poet says that when the river fell into the fountain the small rocks they just bounced like the hailstorm as the hailstorm as the hail falls from the sky and it bounces on the earth or for another example the poet says like shafty grain when wheat or any other grain is beaten by a thresher under the flail so it bounces the husk the shaft bounces so he describes it like that and mid these dancing rocks at once and ever it flung up momently the sacred river the poet says that in the midst of these dancing rocks the river flung up that along with the rocks the river also flung up momently as it fell into the ocean now the poet moves on to say five miles meandering with a mazy motion through wood and dale the sacred river ran then reached to the caverns major less to man he describes the river again he says that the river meander means wander to roam about that it is roaming about in a zigzag motion mazy means zigzag it's roaming about in a zigzag motion through wood wood means forest dale means valley it's moving through the woods and valley and then reach to the caverns major instrument then and it again reach to the deep caves and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean and then finally it falls into what it falls into a motionless to a lifeless ocean now along with the lifeless ocean the river also calmed down then we begin our third stanza and mid this tumult kubla khan heard from far ancestral voices professing war now the speaker moves his attention to himself he goes on to describe himself kubla khan is in this place who is listening who is watching the entire scenario he is listening to the noisy river and he is thinking about war he is imagining as if his ancestors are invoking him to get up and be ready for war they are asking him to leave his lethargy behind and be ready for war now we see what the poet next says the shadow of dome of pleasure floated midway on the wave where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves the poet thinks about the whole setting and says what it was a miracle of rare device a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice he says that this pleasure dome which i have ordered it's a miracle of rare device it's a miracle of imagination as i told you ki this poem is a creation of imagination of romanticism so he says a pleasure a sunny pleasure dome it was a miracle of rare device a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice now you can see there is a use of paradox here there is a use of heightened imagination because how can sunny pleasure dome and caves of ice be together then he moves on to the next lines a damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once i saw it was an abyssinian maid and on her dulcimer she played singing of my interboda now 
amid this setting he moves up his attention from this landscape and he tells us about some other vision which he had had in the past in that vision he had seen a woman who was playing an instrument dulcimer is an instrument damsel means a girl she was an abyssinian girl so he had seen a vision about that girl and when he memorizes about that girl he is he is spellbound by her song the memory of her song fills him with longing and he imagines himself singing his own song the line says could i revive within me her symphony and song to such a deep delight that would win me that with music loud and long i would build that dome in air that sunny dome those caves of ice now he gets so blend spell bound with the song of that girl with the melodious notes of that girl and also his own longing of singing his own song that he imagines of sing uh, he imagines of building that pleasure dome in air that pleasure dome which is a mixture of sunny dome and caves of ice he is here juxtaposing the paradoxical items which is sunny pleasure dome and the caves of ice and this is what heightens the beauty of kubla khan's creation then in the last stanza uh, he says and all who heard should see them there and all should cry beware beware his flashing eyes his floating hair we was circle round him thrice and close your eyes with holy dread for he on honey dew hath fed and drunk the milk of paradise the poet here moves towards the end of the poem and as the poem approaches its end it becomes more personal and mysterious so this end brings him to a final image and this final image is a terrifying one because here we have a creature who is quite terrifying with flashing eyes with floating hair and he has a halo as you see that there is a circle around the head of angels similarly this creature has a circle round his head so he is some mysterious creature and and whoever is looking at this creature is so frightened that they do not even want to see him they are crying beware beware and close your eyes with holy dread the poet says that he is so terrible that close your eyes don't see him here this person kubla khan presents himself to be very powerful and he says that he is almost god like for he says for he on honey dew hath fed and drunk the milk of paradise he says that this person is almost god like because he has drunk the nectar from heaven from paradise so guys this was the line by line summary of the poem kubla khan i hope you guys like the video if you like it please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more such videos in future also share it with your friends if you think that this can be helpful to them if you want to watch the summary of the poem in hindi then you can watch it in from the you can take the link from the description box below till then keep smiling keep laughing have good food and also take out some